So hi everybody, um, uh, my name is Jake Dubbins um, and I am uh, both co-founder and co-chair of the Conscious Advertising Network uh, and co-founder and MD of uh, uh, Media Bounty. Um, and I've been asked by um, the uh, wonderful team at Creative Brief for Bike Live to talk today about the uh, rising problem of um, misinformation about climate, climate science denial um, on online. Uh, and therefore what we as a community and what we as, you know, brands, agencies and the industry can do to confront it. Um, so uh, hopefully I've got a presentation that, that you can all see um, uh, and I will um, go through that and show you what, uh, what, what we mean. Um, firstly, a little bit about the Conscious Advertising Network. Um, so it's a voluntary coalition. Um, run by volunteers, we're all volunteers, um, uh, of now over 100 organisations. Uh, when we launched in, you know, a little while ago, we were only 30, we're up to 100, over 100. So, um, uh, and we're set up to ensure that the uh, ethics catch up with the technology of, of modern advertising. Um, we have a, a number of members um, uh, that uh, range from the likes of um, uh, Merkel Periscopics, O2, um, Havas Media have recently joined, um, the World Wildlife Fund have recently joined uh, as well. Um, so, but also we're, we're, we're supported by civil society members as well. So everyone from, from uh, uh, sort of tell mama um, to climate scientists and, and, and public health uh, experts. So it's a really broad coalition. Um, and we work across six manifestos. Um, so, uh, and those are, as you can see on the screen, um, fake news and disinformation, and, and disinformation is the subject that we'll, we'll be talking about today, but we also cover hate speech, um, fraud, uh, diversity and inclusion, uh, children's well-being, um, and also uh, informed consent. You can read about all of these manifestos uh, on, on our website, but I'll focus today on, on disinformation. So within the, the um, disinformation manifesto, um, you know, we, we basically stipulate um, what our beliefs are. So we believe that uh, education, verification, and institutional trust are key to uh, dealing with the problem uh, of fake news and misinformation. Um, and critically, advertisers um, who effectively are responsible for um, the funding of, uh, of the web and, and, and the narratives that we see, you know, advertisers must endeavor to avoid advertising with sites which commercialize inaccuracies distort facts and don't clearly label opinion and conjecture, but also harass individuals, peddle rumors, hoaxes and conspiracy for commercial gain or which promote misinformation about climate science or, or public health. Um, we've done a lot of work with the, the United Nations and, and we were asked to present at the, uh, the Forum for Business and Human Rights. And that presentation, we, we revealed that, you know, this is an economic model there are uh, a number of uh, organizations out there making an awful lot of money, and that's why we say for commercial gain, to, by, by you know, setting up to spread hoax, rumors, misinformation, and setting themselves up to be monetized by advertising. Um, so that's um, what we want to cover, because you know, whilst you know, our, uh, our environment, our planet is, is, is being polluted, uh, well, so is our online environment as well. Um, we are uh, a, a year away from the, um, the climate summit in Glasgow, uh, COP26, which is the update of the Paris Climate Agreement. Obviously, with the, the recent results from the US election, uh, all uh, things point to the United States rejoining the Paris Agreement um, in, uh, in uh, you know, uh, uh, the president. Uh, at COP26. Um, so, but, you know, our online environment has, has uh, you know, been polluted and our trust is being uh, er eroded uh, in advance of, you know, really important multilateral events like, uh, like COP. So I wanted to show you, first of all, a, a case study um, in, you know, COVID-19 uh, misinformation. Uh, and firstly, the stakes. Um, this is a couple um, uh, who both believed that uh, COVID-19 was a hoax. Um, and unfortunately, the lady in the picture passed away um, to um, coronavirus, um, partly because uh, they thought it was a hoax. Um, you know, a lot of conspiracy theories have been spread across the internet. Um, you know, this is um, 3G, 4G masks 
being burnt down by arsonists because people believe that 5G causes coronavirus. Um, you know, O2 um, actually sort of joined the Conscious Advertising Network um, earlier on this year, partly to, to, to help confront the misinformation that they were finding where you know, their masks were being burned down and their engineers were being threatened, you know, in the middle of a pandemic. So this is, you know, this is the real world um, uh, results of, you know, conspiracy theories being spread, spread online. You know, if, if phone masks are being burnt down in the middle of a pandemic and you can't call an ambulance because one of your family members needs to go to hospital for whatever reason, you know, whether it be COVID or, or something else or an emergency, you know, and you can't get through because a phone mast has been burnt down. You know, these are real world impacts uh, from, from this sort of misinformation. And unfortunately, brands are funding this stuff. We don't deliberately do it, but, but, but we do. Um, so, you know, an example here, this is uh, a brand funding the COVID-19 hoax. You know, this is monetized uh, conspiracy theory or hoax content uh, uh, monetized and, and funded by a brand. Um, this is a, a site saying that 5G is proven to cause COVID-19 monetized uh, and, and, and paid for by brands. This is, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic. Does it exist? Uh, sponsored by Southampton Football Club. Um, so, you know, this is, uh, you know, endemic, you know, we face actually a pandemic of misinformation. The House of Lords earlier this year um, produced a report on democracy and digital technologies. And the headline from the report from Lord Putnam's um, uh, um, select committee was that we face a pandemic of misinformation that threatens our democracy and our way of life. And again, we only have to see what, you know, the, the misinformation spread about elections uh, in, uh, ac across the Atlantic to, to see that, that that stuff is coming to pass. Um, we had recent news as well that the vaccine um, uh, for coronavirus is, is um, coming to fruition. Um, so obviously the, uh, the amount of anti-vax or, or, or vaccine misinformation is coming up. The, the platforms have been meeting with the government um, to to clamp down on that uh, on that sort of misinformation, um, you know. But you know, this is the sort of stuff that we see. You know, this is QAnon inspired. QAnon, for those of you that don't know, is a conspiracy theory that believes that elites uh, and uh, you know and pedophiles uh, and Satanists are, are are running the world, uh, and therefore. You know, this says Satanism on vaccines exposed again, you know, monetized by advertising. I mean, this is, you know, some crazy stuff, right? This is not what you would expect, uh, you know, to have from a presentation in, in, in marketing or advertising. But this is the sort of stuff that is that is happening. This is the sort of stuff that, that is being monetized. So therefore, the people behind these channels, they are earning money from this sort of content through advertising. Um, so on to climate. Um, like I said, next year, um, uh, November next year sees COP26, um, where we need to, you know, as a, as a you know, society, make meaningful action to, to confront the, the climate emergency. Um, just over the past few months, you know, I almost don't have to say this, but it's worth reinforcing that, that this is obviously a phenomenon around the world. Uh, you know, Karachi and Pakistan experienced the worst floods in almost a century. Um, we had the California uh, fires um, uh, earlier uh, this this year in, in September, and almost you know it's, it's almost a lifetime um, away. The the uh, Australian fires uh, at the beginning of uh, of the year in 2020. You know a lot has happened uh, in 2020 since then, and only recently you know this was uh, uh, only you know in the last few few days I guess in the last few weeks um, you know the Atlantic hurricane season has, has broken all records. So, I mean, I don't have to tell you the severity of, of, of I guess, of, of, of what we're facing uh, from, a, from, from the climate. Um, but, you know, 94% of British people now think that climate change is definitely or probably happening, but only 36% believe that climate change is, is entirely or mainly caused by human activity. Um, 
so effectively, you know, we have a massive gap between those that believe that climate change is happening, but that and those that believe that we are not mainly or entirely uh, the, the cause of it. So therefore, action on climate is much more difficult um, if we're being told that, oh, it's just, you know, planetary movements. Greenhouse gases have nothing to do with it. Um, as you can see here, these proportion of people um, that, uh, you know, say that it's definitely ha definitely happening. Obviously, younger uh, people, you know, say that more younger people say that climate change is entirely or mainly caused by human activity. Um, those that are 65 plus, only 27 percent. Um, believe that climate change is entirely or mainly caused by human activity. Um, so that gap is, is a problem. Um, and online, um, our uh, social platforms, the open web, there is an increasing amount of, of climate science denial. So uh, on Facebook, this is uh, uh, an advert uh, by a group called Eco Central. You can look for these ads on the Facebook library, uh, the ad library, um, climate change hoax. Apparently, it's a hoax perpetuated by politicians, celebrities, and the media. So it's 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 us in probably media and advertising that are calling this a hoax. Um, on YouTube in 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 Germany, um, there are videos saying that humans do not make climate change. Carbon dioxide um, is harmless, apparently, um, and the government is paying. Uh, other climate scientists. So uh, decarbonization is done without reason. To, it's just po it's just politics. But this content, CO two is harmless, is again sponsored by um, uh, brands and advertising. You know, the biggest green energy company is sponsoring and paying for content that says that CO two is harmless. Um, there's more content saying that global warming is a hoax. Um, this is a, a video that's been seen 300,000 times. Um, global warming uh, is a hoax, apparently. Um, and these are the brands that are advertising on said uh, uh, um, video. Uh, Amazon committed to uh, emission-free delivery by 2040 and committed to the Paris Climate Agreement 10 years early, but still <laughs> paying for content that says that uh, global warming is a hoax. Obviously, they're not doing it deliberately, um, but it's because we're not asking the right questions. We're not the right, asking the right questions as advertisers. We're not right, asking the right questions of our agencies and the entire ecosystem to make sure that we are not inadvertently funding this stuff. We also believe that the narrative is also moving from climate denial to uh, um, climate delay messaging and also culture wars, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Um, but it also looks like a lot of a lot of this is is um, aligning to, to to what's called the big tobacco playbook so for those of you that, that don't know the big tobacco playbook uh, was conceived saying that doubt um, is effectively our product so in in the in the decades where you know uh, there was a lot of science manipulation around the the, the reality of, uh, of tobacco, and smoking for, for public health, um, there was a lot of delay, you know, harassing scientists, uh, a, 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 and effectively a plan to, to make sure that, that um, the, I guess, bottom line of, of big companies wasn't affected. So there's a number of stages to this. I won't go into it too much, but it's, but it's really stuff to be aware of as, as an advertiser to make sure that we're not funding this stuff. So there is the, the, the sort of fake stuff, so counterfeit science, stuff that's a hoax, climate change is a hoax, you know the blitz, so harassing scientists um, who speak out about this. There's a lot of uh, a lot of that. You know diversionary tactics. You know uh, the screen, so building credibility. There's a group called the Global Warming Policy Foundation that are, that are, that are you know sounds quite um, you know reputable on the surface of it, but again that, that you know they deny uh, climate um, uh, science too. And then, and then the fix and 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 and, and greenwashing as well. So, you know, so it, we've really moved from you know the sort of uh, from from the left to the right, where you know the culture wars say that you know there's more panic. We shouldn't be panicking about this. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't even be talking about this. Um, you know, there's again saying that you know uh, that that the media is ignoring uh, climate alarmism. There is apparently a warmest agenda. 
Um, you know, on the left hand side, you can see there something called the Rebel, which is a Canadian far right site uh, talking about the UN's climate alarmism. This is where we're moving to from outright denial to actually delaying the uh, dealing with the truth. And as you can see, the Design Museum is sponsoring that, that, that content. Um, talked about culture wars. There's a lot of misogyny and, uh, uh, and I'm, I don't know if many of you are aware of the amount of abuse that Greta Thunberg uh, receives uh, both uh, on, on, on social media platforms, but also from, you know, middle-aged male editors of, uh, of, of organizations like Spiked, you know, calling a, a young woman 16 as she was at that time, um, a weirdo and calling for readers to sin against Saint Greta. Um, which is a pretty sinister thing to be calling for. Um, and again, that sort of content sponsored by advertising. LinkedIn, brought to you by LinkedIn. Sin Against St. Greta, brought to you by LinkedIn. Um, again, Greta is the lightning rod of, of this. This is again eco-central and, and the undercurrent of misogyny here, of changing the debate, one sensible idea at a time, suggesting that a, a young woman who's done more to bring awareness of uh, the the climate emergency than, than than most is not sensible, um, you know. So so the the way in which this sort of percolates through culture as well, and again here more examples of how this works in in real time. So you know, again Meghan Markle, Harry, whatever you think of them, whether whether you be a royalist, not a royalist, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, people are effectively delaying action or, 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 or effectively uh, diverting attention to say that celebrities are hypocrites so therefore we don't need to do anything about this. Again stopping climate alarmism scaring our children. So this is all about delaying the truth, it's all about talking about um, uh, you know not acting because because you know people are hypocrites because they might drive a petrol car uh, or, or fly, um, and, and we need to stop scare, uh, scare, uh, scaring our children. So that's the kind of picture, you know, there's, there is increasing amounts of this stuff. Um, we've done a lot of uh, research recently into audiences that share this stuff. Um, we've done a lot of research into the sort of narratives that, that are out there that, that get shared. And what we're saying basically is that the industry needs to be aware of this. Um, you know, a lot of uh, brands and agencies are stepping up to the mark and, and, and saying that they want to uh, commit to net zero, but you can't really commit to, well, you can commit to net zero, um, but also you shouldn't then be funding um, uh, content out there that is, uh, that is denying uh, the science. So what can you do? Um, first thing, ask your, if you're an advertiser, uh, ask your agency if it has a policy on avoiding outright climate change denial. Is your brand funding it? Do you know? That's the first question. Do you know if you are funding climate change denial? Um, understand the language of misinformation. Um, none of us got into this uh, industry thinking that we would have to be dealing with, you know, the language of hate speech, the language of, of, of uh, white supremacy, the language of climate denial, the language of, of COVID denial. But but that's what, where we are, you know, we, we fund the internet, so we need to understand this misinformation. Um, and demand that your media owner partners have climate disinformation policies. Um, we're a bit late to the party on this, um, you know, do those media owners and the media partners and the platforms that we work with, do they have climate policies? You know, if not, why not? And obviously, uh, I wouldn't be doing my job or you know my volunteer job if I wasn't to say join the conscious advertising network. Uh, what we aim to do is spread information as opposed to misinformation about the situation that we see out there um, and we're a, a coalition like I said uh, of, of uh, 100 uh, organizations using effectively trying to be a hive mind uh, to confront uh, the, the issues that we see and help brands and advertisers and, and agencies um, uh, you know, avoid the worst stuff on the internet, but also invest in the best stuff on the internet. Um, and then finally, you know, uh, to find out more, look at the reports that we do, uh, you know, look at the work that our partners do, uh, please do follow us uh, on Twitter uh, and also on LinkedIn. 
Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Um, if you want to find out any more, uh, please do go to our website or get in touch. Um, and yeah, hopefully um, that was helpful for everybody listening. Thanks very much. Thank <laughs> you.